hello everyone and welcome to ocean currents in our video today in continuation to the chain drive explanation we'll be explaining about the topic of the maintenance and inspection of the chain drive and also the chain tightening procedure so let us start once the engine is isolated properly and all the necessary safety measures are carried out after entering into the section where the chain drive exists the first thing that we'll have to notice is if there is any debris on the surface or on the walls that means carbon particles, metalware particles and everything which is available within the vicinity of the or inside the casing of the chain drive that can help us to identify if there has been any excessive wear down or if there has been any possible burn marks on the surface. What this will help us to analyze is if the operating temperatures are good, if the casing has been cleaned and there is no let's say sludge formation from the lube oil that is within the casing and the lube oil condition is good and the metal particles will help us to analyze that if there is any possibility of wear down of the chain links, bushes and other relative surfaces. After that, the next thing that we will analyze is the lubrication nozzles and check for the flow and this can either be done by isolating lines and blowing through them or can also be done by visual inspection and make sure that the lubrication is sufficiently carried out. By doing so, what we'll analyze is that we'll negate or eliminate the option that the lubrication is insufficient and because of that there has been any wear down or any elongation or the burning of the chain and the other relative surfaces. Post that, we'll move to the sprocket faces or the teeth where we have to notice the wear down or the breakages that can possibly happen. In this case on the teeth surface what we will notice is that instead of being a properly graded or inclined surface we will have indentations or pigmentations that can help you identify visibly if there has been any loss of metal. What you can also do is that with the help of a home like template or a surface template we can also check the smoothness of the surface by pushing the template against the wear down areas and this can help you identify in making sure that the wear down gradient is not too high and what you can do is that if the surfaces are not smooth you can use these markers or also use feeler gauge or any other mechanism by inserting it between the template and the surface and also checking for the wear down limit. We can also check the riveted edges or the points where the riveting is carried out and check the surface if the surface of the pin links and the roller links do not develop any crack at all and if any visible cracks or if any indentations are present then we need to make sure that those particular links are decommissioned and the chain is fitted with new links and only then the commissioning is carried out to make sure that the damage is no further aggravated because of the initial ignorance of the concern. Once we have carried out all the regular checks, then what we also need to identify is whether the chain is actually slack in nature or not. To identify that, what we do is that we turn the engine in a way that the free length of the chain, that is the extendable length which is free to move or free for creating any pressure and movement on the horizontal axis is accessible to the user, that is on the side of the adjusting sprocket and by that what we'll do is by creating pressure with our hand that is by pulling and pushing action what we'll do is that we'll pressurize it to move in either of the directions and then by locking it at with the help of a hand force or by pulling it in that direction we'll measure the distance between the vertical and the new position on the horizontal axis if this distance that is the horizontal distance that we have just logged is greater than 1.5 to 2 percent of the total length then what it would mean is that the chain has indeed gotten a little extra free length and we need to carry out the chain tightening procedure however if this free length is way above the benchmark which is mentioned in the manufacturer's manual then we might need to consider the possibility of carrying out a chain replacement altogether for the engine but considering the situation where we have to carry out the chain tightening procedure now let us focus on the procedure itself to carry out the chain tightening or the retightening of the chain basically we need to follow the steps as i am going to detail now what we'll do is first we would remove the washers that are in place to lock the nuts a b as well as c and d and make sure that these nuts are now free to rotate then we'll unlock these nuts one by one and free up the nuts. 
After that, since we have already done the union so that the slack side of the chain is on the free side and is accessible and is on the same side that the tightener wheel and the sprocket assembly is present, we'll then proceed with the chain tightening. We'll also need to make sure that if there are any compensators which will definitely be attached on the chain side then we need to make sure that for the compensators the balance weight is hanging downwards so that there is no upward force. What it would do is that if there is an extra upward force it would mean that your chain is in an elongated state under the state of tension and you do not want to carry out the tightening procedure in case of the chain being in the tension state. After that what we'll do is First, we'll tighten the nut B up to a limit where there is a clearance of only 0.1 mm left between the sharp surface and this nut. We'll measure this with the help of a feeler gauge. And then what we'll do is to further tighten the nut C hard against the sharp surface. Also while tightening the nut B, we have to tighten it to a prescribed angle of the measure which is mentioned in the manual. For example, in the 6S series, that is the 6S 50MC engine or 6S 60MC engine, you will see that it is only up to 12 sides of hexagon which is shown. And what it necessarily means is 12 sides of hexagon means that up to an interpretation of 720 degrees of total tightening from the normal. Then because we have already tightened the nuts here right now and again we will check the free length and if it is now adequate and within the limit what we will do is we will tighten the nut A and B which are used as locking nuts to lock the nuts C and D in the relevant position. After this what we will do is that we will measure the free distance above the nut A which is regarded as the distance X and if this X is within the limits which are mentioned within the manual then it's fine. For example for 660MC engine this limit is 165 mm. However, if the value of x exceeds this value, that is x is greater than 165 mm, what you will do is that you will need to tighten the chain again. But this time what we will do is that we will reduce the turning angle of the nut B and by that what we will do is that we will make sure that this nut is a little up, the compressive force is a little less and since we are locking it in that particular position with the nut A, the distance x will be smaller and the chain free length which will be accessible, which will be free on that side is lesser and the chain will thus be tightened. And again as I said, if this wear limit is exceeding the value that is within the prescribed range, then we will have to completely or altogether eliminate the use of this chain and consider the installation of a new chain altogether or what we can do is that if the wear down is not too much, we can replace certain lengths of the chain, for example, if it is a cost effective measure and do the same process. However, most of the manufacturers and most of the technically apt departments would never recommend to do that because it would mean that you are fiddling with the material nature or the material continuity of the chain and that is why it is not a prescribed or a suggested method and can in very rare cases be used only as a temporary measure when the entirety of the chain is not available for you to easily replace. In addition to this, what we also need to make sure that if the chain has been tightened to a limit which was enforced because of the value x not being in line and thus the nature of the tightening procedure was so that the value would be altered, we have to make sure that the angular position of the camshaft also is changed because as we had discussed earlier that all the timings are synchronized within the system in a way that they synchronize with each other. So any change in the free length deflection of the chain would cause a simultaneous change in the relative position of the camshaft and that is why altering the angular position becomes mandatory. To identify the turning angle as well as the locking position and the marking on the nut side, we have the D2 indication and the top engravement or the marking which helps you to identify at which position the nut needs to be locked and also the markings on the nut which are to be made upon the new installation. I hope that this clear and elaborate understanding of the chain tightening procedure helps you to understand how the steps are taken and how the process is carried out and in case of any doubts please feel free to reach out to us in the comment section. Also make sure to like and subscribe our channel and to also visit the other playlists on our channel and share it with your colleagues and friends. Thank you.